Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's session. My name is Tony, and I'm a product manager on BigQuery ML. As most of you may already know, BigQuery ML enables users to create machine learning models and run inference against them within BigQuery, all by using SQL queries. Today, we're excited to show you two new features we're launching. One, how you can now import more types of models trained outside of BQ into BigQuery ML for inference. And two, how you can run inference with the remote models hosted on Vertex endpoints. It's our pleasure to have Sarah from Samios join us today in this customer case study. Together, we'll explore how Samios is using these two new features to improve in ultra temperature predictions and simplify their existing workflow. Now to kick it off, I'll ask Sarah to give us a bit of background on herself and the company. Over to you, Sarah. Thanks, Tony. Hello, I'm Sarah. I'm a data scientist at Semios. We are a company that offers precision agriculture as a service, and our offering includes pest and disease management, climate monitoring, water management, as well as other services. We have a network of IoT devices installed, which includes weather stations, soil moisture probes, pheromone dispensers, and camera trapped, as well as other types of devices that help us monitor the state of the orchard and help growers make better decisions. Now, the first feature we're going to look at is our expanded support for imported models. Previously, model import only worked with TensorFlow models, but now we're expanding this to support TensorFlow Lite, XGBoost, and Onyx formats. For example, you can convert models from many common ML frameworks, such as PyTorch, Scikit-Learn, directly into Onyx, and then import them into BigQuery ML. This approach allows you to run predictions on state-of-the-art models developed elsewhere directly within BigQuery without having to move your data. By running inference inside BigQuery, you also get better performance by leveraging BigQuery's distributed travel query engine for batch inference tasks. Now I'll hand it over to Sarah again to show us how Samuels is using this new feature and share with us the results and learnings she had from this experiment. Thanks. Just to set up the problem that we are dealing with, so we have sensors that measure uh, weather in the orchard, and the temperature is a really important predictor of crop, pest, and disease development, and specifically in orchard temperature. So that's why we have our installed our, our, our devices everywhere. However, we would like to be able to predict um, beyond where we have our devices. Sometimes, for whatever reason, we can't install a device or a uh, grower wants to have a lower cost solution. One thing that we've found out, though, is that when we get third party weather data, though there is some discrepancy, and this discrepancy is often in a particular direction. For example, maybe at certain times of the day, it's usually warmer than the, the temperature that we measure, or at other times of the day, it might be cooler than the temperature that we measure. And this poses a problem for us because the pest development and the crop development depend not only on the temperature at a specific time, but on the sort of accumulated heat over time. So if we have biases that continue for a longer period of time, we end up predicting when things are gonna happen much more poorly. So vegetation mo modifies the local temperature and it does it because of the evapotranspiration. So as it takes water up, that energy that, that would go into heating up the object instead is dissipated by evaporation. At the same time, different areas have different local features. So some areas have a lot of lush vegetation around them. Other areas, we have a lot of bare areas, barren areas. And how an orchard modifies the temperature depends on these local features. And these are often not captured in third party weather, weather uh, services. So the challenge for us is how can we predict temperature without sensor data? And we would like to be able to account for the influence of local land features and local orchard features. Um, so in this example here, oops, sorry, we have uh, some parts of the orchard that are near to very bare ground and other parts of the orchard, which when, when it's in full season will be very, very lush. And th there will be differences in how these parts of the orchard will modify the temperature. So what we wanna do is we wanna actually use satellite imagery and extract features from them and include them as part of a model to predict the in orchard temperature. So we get third party weather data, we combine that with our extracted features from images, create a machine learning model and use in orchard temperature uh, and predict in, in orchard temperature. So we currently have implemented just using the third party weather data, as well as some other local features that we have um, to predict the in orchard temperature. But using the imported model feature that is now available, we can also use satellite imagery and extract the features from those. 
So this is the general workflow of how we upload a model, create the model, and then make predictions. So I'm just going to walk through a demo of how we are using the new features in BigQuery. So the first step with, uh, oops, I just need to reconnect here. The first step with um, with importing a model, of course, we need a model. So, and we need to, we have a model that's been trained with PyTorch. And what we're going to do is we're going to export it in Onyx format. Um, there were a few things that we needed to make sure we included, uh, which was in which because we're outputting a feature vector, we need to make sure that we have specified the feature vector in when we export the model. So we've done that. Uh, and then we need to upload the model to GCS. And once we have that, it's very simple to import the model. We simply have to, oh, sorry, I'm in the wrong one. Uh, there we are. We simply have to um, make a create or replace model statement here and specify that we're importing an Onyx model. So it's very similar to the previous TensorFlow importing that was already supported. And then once the model has been implemented, we can run it. And so in this case, because we're working with images, we have our images stored in object tables. We are going to be predicting on images, which we have to first decode the image, and then we have to resize it to fit the model that we have. Uh, and then we can get the predictions out. And the predictions, in our case, because we're getting a feature vector out, uh, we just have this list of numbers. So in this case, we're expecting 768 of these um, values. And we'll have that for each image in the data set that we predict on. Uh, once we have those extracted features, we want to combine them with our weather features to train a model that will be able to um, predict the in orchard temperatures. So for that, we are also going to use a BQML. We're going to use the AutoML regressor in this example. Um, we've tried out, of course, different models, and you can use any of the BQML models here. So for that, it's very simple. Uh, I should say that in, in our case here, we were decided that we wanted to reduce the number of features. So we decided to use principal component analysis and extract some of the image features. So we're running that model as well to first extract those image features, then combine them with our weather data, and then train the model. So that's what we have here. So when that's finished, we have our model. And now we can use it to make predictions. So if I'll just go back to our presentation. So in terms of the results, our, it turns out that our image features seem to be fairly important. So we have uh, several different weather features in our model. I think we have around, I think it's close to 60 features in this model, which includes both image and weather features. And we have actually in the top 10, we have um, two of the image-based features, which is, which is interesting. So we're excited about that. And we're excited to see how, how this will help us improve our in orchard weather prediction. That was excellent. Thank you, Sarah. Now we'd like to move on and show you the second feature we talked about earlier, remote model inference. With this new feature, you can now run inference with models that you hosted on Vertex AI endpoints. Again, Sarah is going to show us a demo of how Samuels is using this feature. Over to you, Sarah. Thanks. So yeah, we're going to use the remote modeling feature. So as you can see in this diagram, you can import a model from Vertex AI and then use it to make predictions. So we have several models hosted right now on Vertex AI. And using BigQ uh, for the inference will actually simplify our pipelines quite, quite significantly. So I'm just going to walk through a little quick demo here. And I'm just actually going to show you on the console here um, importing our remote model. So again, it's very simple, very similar to importing the Onyx model. We just create our, our statement for creating the model. and then we just have to specify the connection that we're using, as well as the endpoint point where the model is hosted. Uh, the other thing that we need to specify is the output that we're expecting from the model. And once we have the model, we can make predictions with it. And again, we just use, need to use ML predict because we're predicting on images again. We need to decode the images. So we use this 2Base64 for the image decoding. And then we can get our predictions back. So in this case, I'm just having just this, this particular model here is only predicting two classes and different and same, and I'm getting the problem, the confidences for each of them. So that's that's how simple it is. Uh, just return back to the slide. So in terms of how that impacts us, the big impact is that it simplifies our pipeline and it improves our maintainability. So I think we're really excited to make use of this in the future. 
And I think it will help us iterate on models and it help us run models and keep our pipeline running quickly and easily. That's really cool. Thank you again to Sarah for walking us through these two awesome demos. So I don't see these two new features being helpful to Samuels. Just to recap what we learned today, now you can one, import more types of models into BigQuery ML for inference, and two, run remote inference with models hosted on Vertex AI endpoints, all within BigQuery ML. Besides these two new features, we're also adding support for inference with unstructured data, such as images and text, using Vertex AI's state-of-the-art pre-trained models via the Vision API, Natural Language API, and Transit API. We'll be sharing tutorials and user guides on these features as well. For anyone who's interested in trying out these features, please fill out the form at this link. We look forward to working with you.